this has to do with us being fearful of things that are going to happen and a lot of false deceptive doctrine that's out there that we have to stop believing and fear is not from God and anybody that's living in fear of what's coming down the pike you're not walking in the spirit because we shouldn't be afraid of anything we're the children of the Most High God and we need to start realizing that and start walking in the power and the fire that he gave us rather than what the devil wants us to walk in which is fear and weakness and doubt and unbelief and thinking that we're just going to be destroyed and you know all the suffering that we have to go through we, we don't we're not supposed to live that way it doesn't matter do you understand it doesn't matter what happens to us we win we win this battle in the end we're in a war we're in a war you have to understand you're in a battle and you're in a war there are casualties in war so what is the what is the guy in the army go run and hide and not pick up his weapon and shoot the enemy when he has to because he knows he might get shot and die no he fights for his life what does the Bible tell us fight the good fight of faith if, if we didn't have to fight, the Lord wouldn't have said it. Fight the good fight of faith. It means it's, we're in a fight. We're in a fight for our very lives. But whether we live or whether we die, we, 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 we go to be with our Father, with Jesus, the Holy Spirit. You're not relying on the Holy Spirit. If you're in panic mode right now because of stuff that's out there, all right, there's three days of darkness and um, there's this other thing out there, this guy, um, what's his name, Gary? Mandela. Mandela thing. Yeah, I, I, don't even, I don't even pay attention to this stuff. This stuff is out there and it's putting nothing but fear on God's people. And that's the whole purpose to it. It's to make you think there's, everything's out of control. Nothing is out of God's control. Ever. Ever, ever. And it never will be. It never will be. Even when it looks like Satan's doing his thing. Let him do his thing. We don't care what he does. We belong to the Father. We're in the army of the Most High God. We walk with power and we walk with fire. And when you're getting attacked, just stand your ground. Don't start panicking. Because it doesn't matter. Nothing matters in this world. This is fleeting. This is but for a moment in time. Our, our life is in eternity. And what we do here is we follow the instructions of the Spirit of God. That's what we're meant to do. We're not following the Spirit of God. We're listening to all kinds of doctrine that's making us go into panic mode. Oh, what am I going to do? And Do I have to have enough food? And I have to get this ready and that, get that ready. You can only do what you can humanly do. The rest God takes care of. If you can't afford to buy food and to have it stocked up, don't go into panic mode because God knows that. He'll make a way for you somehow. He's preparing places for us to go to when things get really, really bad, just like he did with the, in the days with Joseph. He saved Joseph, saved the whole nation of Israel. He saved the entire nation. Because he happened to be the brother of the nation of Israel. Who the brothers got jealous and threw him in the ditch. And then they came and they took him as a slave. So that whole devastation that Joseph had to go through was all to save the nation of Israel. And he probably thought to himself, well, why am I going through this, God? I've been faithful to you. He's the one with the coat of many colors, remember? And the father made it for him. He's the one that had the, the, uh, the visions and new things. And the brothers were so jealous of him. The father knew that he had favor on his life. He saved the entire nation of Israel because they threw him in the ditch. So all things work together for good. God uses everything the devil does to us, every single thing, for his glory and his purpose. So we don't have to be afraid of what the enemy's doing. You don't have to be afraid of the situation you might be in that you think it's so impossible. Nothing's impossible with God. And he can change it from one minute to the next that fast. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it in my own life. I know that he comes through for his people. 
Last night, we had a tornado watch in this area, and we never have that. In the middle of the night, around 2.30 in the morning, our lights went out, and the wind picked up. I was ready to run down the basement. I had things ready to go if I had to run down the basement. This is not an area that gets them. And yet we had one. This is what's going to go down the pike. All these, con new, these weather conditions and things that are just not normal for your area. That's why the safe havens must get built. And they have to go up. But we are not to fear. Because God has it all planned out. When the time is right. And we're the ones that make it happen. Because what do we do? We fight the good fight of faith. We don't draw back. God says you'll have no pleasure in us if we draw back because we're fearful. You just don't draw back and let the devil just run you down. You stand up and you rebuke him in Jesus' name. And take every weapon that you have been given by God and you use it. And when we all join in prayer, fasting, prayer, and we act and do what we have to do, God will move us in the directions we're supposed to go in. So let me read what he gave me. When good people do nothing, evil takes over. Fight the good fight of faith and endure until the end. Make sure you are in this fight and you are not just sitting around waiting for evil to have its day. Each moment you have, you are given opportunities to rebuke evil. And are you doing it? If my people would stand against evil, it would have to back off. Do not just accept what the enemy throws your way. He looks for it to stick to you, and when it does, he engages in it, so you can be bound. Use the weapons of your warfare and drive back the forces of darkness upon your land. The kingdom of God is truly at hand, and every one of you plays a role in bringing back this earth to me. I will say that again. Every one of you plays a role in bringing back the earth to me. It is mine, and the fullness thereof, but my foe has slowly moved in and corrupted mankind. My people will never give in to the evil one. So what you do is to stand in faith and waver not, for the return of Yeshua is sooner than you think, and we will destroy evil. You still can destroy evil if you use the name given to you and rebuke it when it comes and attacks. You are not defenseless in this battle, and you have to fight in order to win. Do not accept what evil wants to do. Rise up, my people, and enter into my kingdom where you belong. Take hold of what belongs to you and walk in peace. Love one another and sincerely pray for each other so truth can avail. Too many lies trying to captivate you and keep you from your purpose, which is to lead souls to Yeshua and set the captives free in his name. Wake up, my love. We will be together, and you must speak out against all manner of evil. And be not afraid, for I have overcome this world. And no weapon formed against you can prosper unless you stand back and accept it as your fate in life. Your fate is to be my bride. Now this is Jesus talking. The Father was speaking, now Jesus steps in and talks. Your fate is to be my bride and to take back what the enemy has stolen. If it is time to establish my kingdom on the earth, as my people rise up and claim it, it is time, he's saying, hold tight to what you hold dear to your hearts and never let go of my love for you because you get offended and feel I have forsaken you. All lies and deception, for I will never leave you or forsake you. We are one for all eternity. Yeshua HaMashiach, your Lord and your God. He's saying right there, your Lord and your God. He's one. <laughs> he's one with the Father. The Father speaks, He speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks, they're all one. I can inject things. It's all one in the Spirit when you're one. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you become one with Him. Sometimes you're not even sure who's speaking. <laughs> they're just speaking and saying what they have to say. You, th there's a connection. We should fear nothing. The reason we're fearing is because we're not filled with the love of the Father and we don't get it that He loves us. We're either condemning ourselves or you're not walking the walk and you feel condemnation on your life. You think you've blown it. You think you've done so much wrong in your life. You're, you're not walking the walk in many ways. You keep falling on your face. So you have guilt, guilt, guilt. And that's what the devil uses. Condemnation. He's the pointing of the finger. God's not pointing the finger at you, church. 
Neither is Jesus and neither is the Holy Spirit and neither would I. <laughs> I've done nothing but say love one another. And yet I get emails from people saying things. It's absolutely ridiculous. There's just the pointing of the fingers and we do it to each other all the time. We find one little thing that we try to pinpoint and say, oh, well, you did this and you did that and you said this and you said that. And you don't listen to the whole picture. You can't take one video and then come up with a conclusion about somebody. You have to hear what they have to say. And if you listen to somebody over and over again and you start to find things that are off scripture, you know you found something wrong. And they're in error. That's what we don't do. Because we don't know our scriptures, so we don't know who's in error and who's not. So the devils come in with all kinds of lies and deceptions, you know, about this, this thing of, of, of the enemy being able to change things in history and this and that and this. How much power do you think this, this, this being has? He's a fallen angel. Don't give him more credit than, he, than he's due. He's a fallen angel who's doomed to hell for eternity with all his demonic dominions. They're going to hell. So how much can he possibly do to us? What can he do to you? Kill you? Think about it. What can he do to a born-again, spirit-filled child of God? Kill you. That's, I guess, the ultimate destruction that we think. And what happens when he kills you? You're immediately out of your body in the presence of the Lord. So did he win? Absolutely not. You just got there a little sooner than maybe you could have gotten there. We can't lose. We got to get this and we have to get it. We're loved. God is not hitting us over the head with bats. Well, why did you do this today? And why did you do that today? He understands very well that we have an enemy who is out to stop us in our missions for God. But it, you play a role in it. Either you accept what Satan's throwing at you, or you don't. When the devil put cancer on me after my late husband died, all right, he put cancer on me. Stage four it got to. It was growing for a while, quite a while in my colon. And when I found out the truth, do you know what happened to me? It didn't compute. I did not believe in my heart of hearts that it was my time to go home yet. I wasn't even get, get it started with my ministry. It barely got started. The devil just got fizzed out right there with what he tried to do because God healed me. He set me free. Jesus sets us free. Don't let it compute. Don't receive the lies of the devil. Stand and fight the good fight of faith. Not with fear, but knowing that God loves you. Because whether I was going home or whether I was going to stay here, it didn't matter. I just loved the Lord. And I totally gave it to Him. Totally gave it to Him. You have to give it to Him. And literally trust Him with your life. That's the bottom line, was when you can let go and let God. That's when you'll have victory. We're too focused on our lives and what we want to do and I'm not happy today and why is this happening to me and if you really loved me, God, why would I be going through this, that, and this, and that and we get offended? Don't get offended. This world, we are part of the world, we're not of the world. We're in the world, we're not of the world. We're in the world, we're not of the world, which means we don't belong to the world. We're not in the world to have a good old time in the world. We're in this world to be the children of Almighty God and to do the works that He's called us to do, which is what? Lead people to salvation. Lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Cast out demons in His name. That's what we're called to do. And are you doing it? Or are you so wrapped up and what's going to happen to me, and I don't have enough food, and I can't get gold and silver. I couldn't get gold and silver either. Somebody wrote me uh, an email yesterday and said, you know, you're really kind of deceiving the people by saying that you're, you don't know anything about the stocks and the gold and the silver. I said, listen, the people that know me know I'm telling the truth. You don't want to believe me? Don't believe me. I don't care. When I say I know nothing about the stocks, 
I absolutely know nothing about the stocks. I have never done anything with the stocks. I have never followed the stocks. I have never had gold and I have never had silver. Up until recently when God started doing something with it. Because I could have cared less and I didn't have the money to get it anyway. So, God provides what you have need of. The ministry is receiving what it needs to build a safe haven for you and me. His people. And those who are listening to the Spirit will know that these safe havens are going to be vital and key. When areas can get hit with tornadoes and things can happen, we are going to be in places that is going to be able to withstand those kind of elements. We have to be, have a heads up with all that's going to, go, going to happen so that we can have these places where we can be as safe as we can possibly be. And that's what God's going to do. He's going to keep us safe until we get raptured out of here. So, that's all I have to say, but fear not, my little ones, for I have overcome the world. That's what he tells us. And if you are in fear, you need to rebuke it in Jesus' name and let him love you today. Let him love you and fill you with the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit. So I'm most full of sharp, and I'll be back when he sends me back again, and have a blessed day.